This is Magic and How to Fix It. This episode, Animals Everywhere. Read by Molly O'Donnell. One moment, I'm just getting dressed. Cleo called out in response to the banging on the door as she chased a smouldering phoenix chick across her one-bedroom apartment. The sprightly thing darted across the room, flapping uneventfully. You've already had ten minutes. The voice behind the door called back. Time well spent, too. In the last ten minutes, she'd managed to wrangle the snapping turtles into a slightly unzipped suitcase, let the birds out of an open window in the kitchenette, and hidden a unicorn foal in the closet. Open up or I'll open up for you. She dove across the room, banging into the coffee table and grabbed hold of the tiny orange bird and blew him out before placing him gently in her dungaree pocket. She glanced at the room, now in a more than lived in sort of disarray. Oh, who cares if the landlord thinks she's messy anyway? She dusted a few stray feathers off her t-shirt and let out a long sigh to compose herself. She opened the door and peeked through the gap. Her eyes darted side to side and then down, where they met the green eyes of the dwarven man who looked very much fed up already. The sight of Gren gave her pause, but she didn't let it show. <laughs> Laundry day, she forced a laugh. You know how it is. He furrowed his brow and craned his neck to peer into the apartment. Oh, can I help you, Gren? She asked, feeling a little bit more composed. Surprise inspection, he said flatly, placing a hand on the door. Uh, don't you need to give notice? she asked. He pushed firmly on the door. Take it out with someone who cares, he said as he pushed his way past her. Cleo ran over to the sofa and sat directly on the burn mark left by the phoenix. She smiled as he passed her and asked, So, what's the problem this time? There's been a number of complaints since you moved in, in addition to the late night howling. Well, that's just my boyfriend. I definitely do not have any pets, she asserted. Sure, he said, rolling his eyes. A neighbour reported a thick black smoke originating from this premises. Are you aware of any such instances? Well, I'm not the best baker in the world, sure, but I didn't burn the place down, as you can see, she replied. They eyed each other, silently, calculating their opponent. Gren was suspicious from the moment Cleo moved into the apartment block, but Cleo was a fox, a determined fox. An audible thumping caught their attention and drew their eyes from one another. What's that noise? Gren said. Smooth as silk, Cleo pulled the closest blanket under her bum as she rose to cover the bird mark and followed Gren towards the kitchenette. The little suitcase where she had hidden the turtles was now hopping slowly across the tiled floor. He reached down towards the zipper, but Cleo placed herself between them. No, she yelled a little bit too intensely. Don't open it. It took me forever to get those dancing shoes in there, she continued, thinking on her feet. Dancing shoes, he said suspiciously. They're totally broken. They won't stop dancing. I'll be asking for a full refund. She picked up the suitcase, which was heavier than she expected, but just about kept a straight face. He knitted his brow at her as she jiggled about behind him with the case in hand, watching him open and close drawers and cabinets. He even checked the oven. What would she be hiding in the oven? How cruel did he think she was? Cleo wasn't worried. She didn't hide anything in here anyway. He straightened up and wore an unsatisfied look on his face. Just above the dwarf's head, the air seemed to have an iridescent quality, as if it were a glamour. She squinted. It was a glamour. A very large, veiled constrictor was hanging from the overhead cabinets. She was honest with herself. She'd forgotten all about him in her panic. I have some complaints of my own, you know, she said quickly before his eyes could fixate on the shimmering outline of a snake slowly reaching down towards him. He turned to face her and said, Oh yeah? Write him down and port him to the office. Then he turned and started walking towards the bedroom. She'd never find that snake again. But she followed him into the bedroom anyway. The rent is extortionate. 
500 gold pieces per week? You couldn't swing a jackalope in here. She put her hand up as Gren opened his mouth to speak and continued, It's a figure of speech. He grunted and bent down to look under the bed. A single horn poked out from between the wardrobe doors with a rattle. The fall was only small, but it would be a tight squeeze for anyone. The water runs green, there's no ventilation, not to mention the damp. There are mushrooms growing on the ceiling, for goodness sake. Calmly, she pulled a long cardigan from the pile of clothes below and placed it over the horn. Gren stood up with his face scrunched up. Then move out. Cleo watched him do one final survey and then he conceded. Well, all seems to be in order here. The corner of Cleo's lips pulled into a smile. She led him out the door and down the hall to see him out. The door halted as Gren slipped his foot between the door and the frame and pushed it back open. Seriously, he said, this is your last chance. Any further complaints and we will pursue eviction. What kind of trouble could I possibly be cooking up here? She replied. A voice came from behind Gren. Um, excuse me, is this number two Rangoon house? Behind the nervous man was a medium-sized cage covered in a canvas tarp. Little black scaled feet were just visible. Crap, he wasn't supposed to arrive until tomorrow, she thought. Uh, do you have the right address? She lied nervously. Um, I have a delivery for Cleo Mooney. Oh, right, of course. She placed a hand onto Gren's shoulder and led him up past the cage before he could take a closer look. It was nice to see you today, Gren. I promise to keep the noise down, okay? She let out a tightly held breath. From behind her, she felt a sudden intense heat. The cloth went up in a puff of black smoke that billowed out along the city street. Cleo waved a hand in front of her face, holding back a cough. The wind blew and the smoke cleared, revealing the delivery man, with his hands on his knees, coughing, and a small black dragon in the cage next to him. <laughs> it's, it's not mine, she said shakily. From the look on Gren's face, she knew that the jig was up. There was nothing she could say this time. Sweet little dragon was in full view of the neighbourhood, who were now all stood out on their doorsteps or the windows of their apartment building watching the drama unfold. Pack your bags and get out. Then, a group of assorted birds of all colours flew out of Cleo's front door. The neighbours ducked as a low-flying eagle owl glided out past them and landed on Cleo's shoulder. Even the little phoenix in her pocket had popped his head out to see what all the yelling was about. In fact, don't bother pecking. The guards will want to see this illegal petting zoo you've been running from a cramped bed seat. So you admit it's too small? She paused to evaluate his reaction. Can I? He cut her off. Don't even think about your deposit. 